Just six weeks earlier, 50 miles away in Tel Aviv, another bomb goes off. How can they do this? How can they do this? April 30th, 2003, just after midnight, seconds after an explosion. I was laying in a puddle of beer and blood and broken glass. This is the closest I've ever, I've ever come to death. When the blast goes off, filmmaker Jack Baxter is finishing up a shoot on his documentary called Blues by the Beach, about this unique bar in Tel Aviv. We started doing the documentary about Mike's place and the waitresses, the bartenders, to try to get that perspective, pretty much stay out of the politics. I want you all to take care of all the people here in the house, the waitresses, the bartenders. This is a song about freedom. Mike's place is a bar where people come to escape the tension of a country too often torn apart by terrorism. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. The bar has an international feel. Nearly everyone speaks English. And talking about politics and religion is discouraged. A good bartender knows how to get out of it eloquently. Good line is always, so are we still talking about sex? Jack has chosen Mike's place as the subject of his documentary to show how Israelis are coping with the violence. Okay, here you go, look. One eye, second eye. Over the course of just two weeks, Jack has become close friends with the owner, Gal, bartenders Josh and Pavla, Avi, who works security, and Dominique, a 24-year-old waitress from France who has dreams of opening her own pastry shop. She really affected me, and I guess the film shows shows what she's like. If things are going well, I see myself maybe having my own little coffee shop things or selling cakes to half of Tel Aviv, buying my cakes. It's Jack's last night in Israel. He's having a beer at a table outside, saying his goodbyes. Dominique was sitting next to me. That's when one of the suicide bombers came up and tried to get into the place. Avi, the security guard, has a bad feeling when 21-year-old Asif Hanif walks up. The guy was a little bit too quick in his pace. Suicide bombings were going on all the time at that particular time. So we both looked at each other and uh, froze. Hanif is strapped with plastic explosives when Avi kicks him in the chest to keep him from entering the crowded bar. And the next thing I can barely remember is this guy, you know, stepping back up onto the sidewalk and yelling, Allahu Akbar. As Hanif stumbles backwards, he blows himself up. The explosion sends Jack flying into the front window. The next thing I know, I'm in the hospital and it's three days later. You know, you know how he's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> he's, 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 he's hurt, but he's, he's gonna be, he's gonna be fine. I know. He saved a lot of people's lives that night. Avi is critically wounded, but is hailed as a national hero. Who knows how many people would have been killed in that small space. So he saved, you know, literally a hundred lives. Why Mike's Place? Well, I think Mike's Place represents the best that uh, this part of the world has to offer. Just weeks earlier, the suicide bombers at Mike's Place, Asif Hanif and Omar Khan Sharif, record this video about their plan to kill as many as possible. The real terrorists are these Israelis. They're really sickos. It's a great honor to kill one of these people. It's a great one. Jack's burned face heals, but he still suffers from some of his other injuries. Frank and Jack, I'm partially paralyzed right down the middle. I also, my eardrums blown out. I had two operations on that. You know, they grafted a piece from my neck into my ear. Two musicians playing that night and Dominique, the French waitress who is sitting right next to Jack, are killed. 
another 55 people are injured. The second suicide bomber inexplicably disappears before achieving his goal. Dropped his bomb belt and he took off and there was a big manhunt in Israel. He was found 12 days later floating in the port of Tel Aviv. Why are there people who feel the need to hurt each other? But that doesn't mean that I'll forget you. For those who live through this suicide attack, the close call with death is impossible to forget. After the cameras go and after the crowd disperses, you're the one that's left with mental pictures and pain. But uh, you learn to live with it.